Good day, watchers. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to feature the latest piece from Spinnaker Watches. So this particular piece I've already unboxed on my Facebook page. Uh, uh, so check that out if you haven't already and if you're interested. If you don't follow me on Facebook, do consider doing that uh, uh, because I feature some exclusive content. So this one is just uh, uh, influencer packaging with Instagram photo guide and, uh, you know, kind of a place there for a discount code. I'll put down any discount codes I have in the description uh, below this video. So check that out for any updated codes that I can find. I'll put it there. Uh, so in here, just a basic uh, Spinnaker Watches card tag, nothing more than that. Okay, and then there's nothing more about this packaging really. I'm just gonna put that aside now and uh, show you guys the watch. So guys, this is the Spinnaker Bradner SP 5057 automatic dive watch. Um, uh, this is named the Brandner in uh, a tribute to Hugh Brandner of the Manhattan Project. So he was involved in the Manhattan Project at the end uh, of World War II. Uh, and then he's also a dive pioneer. He was uh, credited uh, with inventing the first wetsuit in the 1950s, I believe. So in here, this is the Seiko NH35A movement. Uh, you know, a movement that you've seen many times before on the channel. Nothing too special, but a good workhorse. 21,600 beat per hour, 24 joule movement with a 41 hour reserve. You've heard all that uh, specs before. It does have the quick set date. In this case, it's in the three o'clock window. White writing on black wheel there with that uh, white border on that window. It does have uh, hacking and it does have manual winding and it's adjusted uh, with that crown on the four o'clock position in this case. Uh, now this one is regulated to pretty wide uh, variation. So minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day is the rated accuracy. This one is actually performing about plus 10 seconds per day in actual use. So no, no that's you know, pretty fair, nothing to complain about really, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the case here is 42 millimeter in diameter, 316 seal steel. Thickness is 14 millimeters. Now, you know, that it is, it is actually 14. I've measured it with a caliper, but it looks actually thicker than that, interestingly. You know, like uh, many of my pieces, like Invicta Pro Divers, are 13. This one actually looks significantly thicker. I think it's just the effect of the case design there, just the, the high uh, sides there. Okay, the lugs, 20 millimeter across. Okay, steel lugs there. Uh, with a lug to lug distance of 50 millimeters. So fairly modest size, not super big, but it's fairly modest. Uh, because it's a leather strap watch, it comes in at 90 grams on the scale. So pretty light, you know, and easy to carry and, and very comfortable because of that. The case itself, uh, finishing is fully brushed. So I'll just pan it around, let you see the brush finish, which, you know, in spinnaker watches is pretty fair for the price that uh, they are asking for. So in this case, it is actually 285 US dollars on the sign up. Uh, links below, of course, if you are interested to check that out. For that price, the quality, the finishing is actually pretty fair, I think, in, in what they have uh, given. So, you know, the, the only polished part of this case is actually on the face of the crowns, and there is a laser edge there. This one is actually a plain crown, and that one is, of course, uh, for the internal bezel. This case, it's supposed to be a compressor style case, a super compressor style, you know, which was invented, uh, you know, earlier uh, last century and, uh, you know, supposed to function by increasing depth causes uh, compression of the glass as well as the case back against the gasket. I think this one isn't actually an actual compressor. It's just kind of mimicking uh, that super compressor look, for example, in that uh, Longines uh, Legend Diver, which I reviewed a little while back. Right, with the case back, you've seen the screw and display there with that uh, custom rotor of that Seiko movement. All right, screw in case back with this screw in crown. This one's actually a loose crown, it's not screwing. Interestingly, uh, I, I, I'm not sure how that functions in terms of water resistance, but it is rated at 150 meter water resistance, so the minimum for dive watch rating. Now, moving on to the dial. Right, I think it's going to be difficult for me to show it in this lighting here, but there is actually a very subtle sunburst uh, on that black dial. It's very subtle, so you're really only going to notice it right in, in uh, broad daylight, really, not so much in uh, indoor lighting. 
Looking at the markers, you can see that's all applied markers for the hour markers. Uh, the spinnaker is, you know, some sort of embossment there, but it's not. I don't think it's actually a proper applied uh, brand there. But the, all the markers are applied, uh, and there is a, a a black chapter ring, and you can see just barely coming through, just outside the hour markers inside the bezel, uh, is a chapter ring. It's printed kind of black on black. So it's, it's actually kind of difficult to see, you know, that's one thing about that chapter ring, but it is there. Um, now the hands are simple baton hands with a kind of a more, uh, I guess, widening on the hour hand that you can see there. It is uh, applied with a super luminova and this kind of like patina colored super luminova, which I quite enjoy. I think it's quite a nice little touch here, but it's not fantastically applied. So it's not a huge amount, meaning that this doesn't function superbly well. It functions pretty much nearly through the night, but it's not as good, for example, as many of the Seiko Lumi Bright uh, divers that I have. Now, the internal uh, rotating bezel that I've already kind of started showing you here is loomed uh, with Super Luminova all the way around. So all that patina color you can see there is actually applied Super Luminova. Um, and the crown at the two o'clock position, uh, you can see me Turning now uh, obviously controls that internal rotating bezel. It is bi-directional, not unidirectional, as is the case with uh, most internal rotating bezels or every one that I have uh, seen anyway. On top of that is actually a flat sapphire, right? So that the middle part is all flat, but it's actually pleasingly rounded at the edge there. And that's pretty cool. It's a pretty nice effect. And it gives some uh, nice edge effects there as you rotate the watch. So I, I really quite like the way that they've done that glass. Moving on to the band now. Okay, so it's a typical spinnaker watches uh, treated waterproof uh, leather band. You know, it, it's it's average. You know, I found their straps to be fairly average. They're, they've got some stiffness to them. Uh, I think they do stand up to uh, water use as far as I've tried all uh, my spinnaker watches. Uh, but I, I don't think the quality is, uh, you know, world beating. It, it's I, I think it does the job for what this watch uh, purports to do. Okay, so that's really the watch itself. What have I enjoyed about this? Well, I, I think it's a neat, different design. You know, this is they haven't done a design like this before. I really quite um, enjoy this kind of compressor case look with the jewel crowns. Uh, it, it really does stand out. And uh, when I saw this on the release pics, immediately I thought, oh yeah, definitely I want to get this in hand to review. You know, the handset is a bit different, right? Uh, not sure whether they've done anything like that before, but really I, I do appreciate that, that different looking handset. Uh, it's got, you know, a, a quality, you know, fairly reliable workhorse movement. Yes, it's a, it's a basic movement, but it is a, a, a movement that has proven to be reliable. And it's got sapphire on top, you know, so for the asking price, pretty fair, I think, for, for what they're giving. Now, what, what's the weaknesses? Well, it's a little bit slabby. And uh, let me just put it on for the wrist shot for you now. Okay, so there we go. The Sprinnaker Brandner, right, on my 17 centimeter wrist. Now, remember, that's 50 millimeter on the lug to lug there. So it's kind of borderlines, just kind of acceptable for me, I think. But if you look at the, how it sits on the wrist itself, right, uh, just turn it around for you. It, it's a little bit of a slab, you know, the way that it rides up high. Yes, the lugs do turn down a bit, but that case back, how far out it protrudes, it makes it ride pretty high. It doesn't quite hug the wrist like other designs do. So that's something to be aware of if you're gonna uh, consider this watch. And, and you know, overall, uh, the design is definitely kind of a casual sports style. It's more difficult to sneak this into office or formal occasions, particularly with the red of this strap. Now, they, it does come in other variations. You can check that out on the website. Uh, but this particular model with the red strap, uh, <laughs> you know, I think you're not gonna kind of put this into formal occasions. Uh, you know, I, I think the chapter ring is difficult to see. I've mentioned that already. Yes, if you have bright light, it's not a problem. But I think anything other than bright light, it's actually quite difficult to use that particular chapter ring that, you know, the way they've chosen to put those colors there. Um, and then lastly, you know, the strap, uh, it's, it's average. 
Uh, and, and one thing, uh, apart from the chapter ring as well, I will mention that that bezel does have minute markings. Okay, I don't know if that's going to come true. It does have kind of minute markings, like dots there inside. I think it's very difficult to see. So interestingly, they've chosen to make that black on black as well. So for die functionality, I'm not sure about that. You, you can't see the minutes. Yes, you can see the 10 and the 5, and then that's the zero marking there. Maybe that's enough, but but... I would have thought that you may want to have the minutes, particularly in the first 15 uh, minutes of the bezel, which is what a lot of dive watchers tend to do. So, so that, that's really something else I've pointed out here. So guys, there we have it. The Spinnaker Bradner SP5057 automatic dive watch. Let me know what you think. You know, I really have found the look pretty good. I've enjoyed the, the style of this watch, but it does have some shortcomings. So guys, um, you know, if you have any Spinnaker watches, if you have this watch, let me know. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on this particular model. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content weekly, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you next time.